everyone, and welcome back on into another video. Today, I want to compare the top five things that I prefer or think that Final Fantasy XIV does better than World of Warcraft so far. Now, the reason I'm comparing these two MMOs is because World of Warcraft is a game I've been heavily invested in for the last 20 years and something that I've streamed as my main game for the last six or seven years. So it's what I know. If I was someone like Preach who has got his fingers in so many different MMO pies, then I would probably be making comparisons to other MMOs as well, such as Guild Wars 2, RuneScape, Elder Scrolls Online. Eventually, if I do try and pick up Guild Wars 2, which does look quite fun, then maybe I'll have the little crossover comparisons. But for now, it's just going to be comparing these two games. Now, the first thing that really hit me when I found out more information about Final Fantasy XIV is the fact that you can play all of the jobs and classes on one character and all of the professions or the crafting on one character. You don't need infinite ults. You don't need to make five feral druids just to try and get that trinket from the raid just to end up on the bench anyway. You can just do everything on one character, which is fantastic. And I do really, really like that element of Final Fantasy. I think it allows for you to feel like you're constantly progressing your main and you can help people out. You can go do a dungeon with a friend who maybe just is getting involved in the game or maybe they're trying to level up a, a different class and you can go jump into a dungeon with them and say, oh, you know what? I'm not going to play my main. I'm going to play my alt spec and I can seamlessly do that. I can do that quite quickly and effectively and still feel like I'm gaining progression on my main by doing my dungeon roulette or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. And I think that's fantastic. When you do go and play World of Warcraft and say you're a you know, big time Feral Druid and you really want to play some Enhancement Shaman, but that entails you having to completely re-level a new character and having to gear up a separate character with all the gearing systems that WoW has and hope that you get lucky on raid clears and, um, and your vault and all that kind of stuff, it just makes it quite seamless to only have to play one character at a time, especially when it comes to all the professions as well. That is a thing of beauty. So I love that about Final Fantasy. The next big thing for me is the social element and the community element surrounding Final Fantasy. The two big differences I say uh, between Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft is the fact that Final Fantasy XIV is a story-driven MMORPG, whereas World of Warcraft is definitely situated as this end game kind of grind MMO and is less about the story and the social element in some ways. So Final Fantasy, you're very much encouraged to be very welcoming to new players and to want to make friends with people and to be very supportive. And that's the kind of the energy that the community has fostered and definitely displays to newcomers, not just streamers, but everyone alike. And the thing that really helps assist that is the fact that you have the Sprout system. The way that the Sprout system works is that every single player that is new to the game I think for the first three months or six months or however long that they play the game, they have a little leaf above their head, a little sprout, which says to everyone else in the game, hey, I'm new. I don't know what I'm doing yet. And it's kind of like in real life when somebody has a learning plate or a just pass plate on their car and you know not to get too close to them, give them their distance. They might break suddenly. You might drive past them and they might be crying in the front seat. This is a nice system to have to say to everyone else, hey, this person genuinely is new. They're genuinely unsure of themselves. So go easy on them. If they don't, if they're not doing tons of damage, if they don't know their full rotation, if they're dying to mechanics, go easy on them. If they're begging for Gil uh, in Limsa Laminsa, or they don't really know where to go for the glamour system, because let's be honest, nobody does, then you can be very supportive of them and coddle them a little bit and know that they're not faking it or they're not just some dummy. So that's a really nice system. In WoW, they've recently just um, added in kind of like a mentor type system as well, which can be very helpful to people, but it's not quite as simplistic as just giving somebody an icon of just saying, hey, I am new, which I think is quite nice to have because you can just immediately see that somebody is fresh to the game. So that community, that social aspect gets encouraged by all of these little things. As well as with that, I love the fact that Adventure Plates exist. Adventure Plates is a really fun element of like a social culture in Final Fantasy XIV. For anyone who doesn't know what they are, it's a customizable profile basically. It's kind of like a, having a little MSN profile or something like that. You get a little title and you can put a little bio in there and you can customize what your profile picture looks like. And a lot of them are really 
funny, shall we say. Some of them might even get you banned. But it can be fun going around cities and interacting with people and immediately going, right, what's your adventure play? Are you a creature or are you a real, normal, functioning member of society? So I really love that element as well. Now recently, I went to my first house party in Final Fantasy XIV. This is something that I think Final Fantasy absolutely excels at, which is the housing system. Something that we don't even have in World of Warcraft. So I can't really compare it to other MMOs out there that might also do a housing system and potentially might even do it better. I think Final Fantasy has a great housing system. Yes, okay, I know there's some issues with how you can actually acquire those houses in terms of bidding on them and the process by which you go through that. But when you're in one, when you have it established and you're decorating and you're painting the walls and you're putting the carbuncle lampshade up, it's a thing of beauty. And the house parties that occur are magnificent. There are real DJs on Twitch going through a full set. They've got their DJ decks. They're doing the shout outs. There's people doing knee slides on the dance floor in jeans. It's beautiful. Um, I was having a couple drinks. I was getting into the, the party scene. And within that, there's an option to adjust your camera. You, you can go into like an idle camera mode, which will just cause it to just jump and hit different angle, angles of people and things around you. So it's really quite an atmospheric event and they're really fun to be a part of. And when before I started playing Final Fantasy, I thought this looks goofy, this looks dumb. Then I jumped into it and I went, oh my god, this is actually really a funny time, especially when you're getting involved with any particular streamer that you're watching and seeing how they're uh, having fun with the system too. So the housing system is phenomenal in Final Fantasy. It's something that WoW is missing. I know that the devs have previously said on WoW that if they were to do player housing, which I think they can, you know, do in terms of, uh, you know, the technology they have, they have it, it's possible from what they've said, but it would mean that we would probably lose out on a whole raid tier or something like that. In my opinion, that is absolutely worth it. Because yes, of course it would suck to lose a raid tier, but then you'd have a housing system forever. Something that could always be added to, something that would just allow so much additional customization assets to be added into the game, and uh, more, more things could be added to the store. Imagine if you could buy your very own rug from Bobby himself. Wouldn't that be great? Now the next thing that I really love about Final Fantasy, comparable to World of Warcraft, is the ease of customization and the discouragement of add-ons, if not making them more or less a bannable offense. So Final Fantasy has a great ease of customization built into the game. You go onto the menu section and there is just a hood layout tool right there for you where you can customize everything flawlessly. It's a really effective tool, it's very straightforward, and it's fantastic. In World of Warcraft, for the longest time, we haven't had that. We did just get it recently added in Dragonflight, but it is still going through iteration and is still having things added to it uh, as far as I can last remember. So the thing I like about that with Final Fantasy is I've come in to start playing the game and I've immediately started adjusting things, whereas with World of Warcraft, I've got so accustomed to playing the game with the default UI for the longest time because I didn't want to mess around with LUI and all these external add-ons that now I'm kind of locked into default UI with WoW. I just can't help it. I can't change it at this point. So I do a lot of default um, gaming. But because it's built in with Final Fantasy, I think a lot more people are probably accustomed to moving things around. Now this kind of leads me into, you know, a bigger discussion surrounding add-ons. Yes, there are add-ons in Final Fantasy, and yes, you can get, like, you, yes, you can use them, but you can't use them to the same extent that you can in World of Warcraft. So if the devs do catch you using, you know, malicious add-ons or using things like DPS meters and going around and giving people a hard time, bullying people because they didn't do enough damage and you did more damage than they did, and whatnot, then you can get banned for that. Now, there are a lot of people that have things like DPS meters or speech bubbles or shaders, which actually affect the, you know, the look and feel of the game itself. People do use these things, but as long as you don't go around bragging about them or showing them off, you can't really get banned for them. So that's one of those where it's, you know, a little bit under the, swept up under the rug a little bit. But what it means is, is that people can't really just extensively use add-ons and create an experience that's different 
from a new player's perspective to a veteran's perspective. If you go and play World of Warcraft and you've only been playing it for a few weeks or months, you're not going to be aware of all of these add-ons necessarily, whereas somebody who's been a veteran player for a very long time is going to have probably 20, 30, 40, 50 add-ons that they're using, including weak auras to help them with combat and fights and customization and ease of access into the game, trivializing a lot of things at times. Whereas a new player is not going to necessarily have these tools and might find it more difficult to, you know, ramp up their game knowledge and expertise and get into more uh, difficult content as time goes by. So that's something that I do like about Final Fantasy. We've even seen recently in World of Warcraft a radar overlay add-on uh, in a fight like Echo of Neltharion, which very, very much got trivialized to a degree because of the ability of add-ons to just immediately give players positions of where to stand without having any element of thought or coordination um, or independent kind of reliance. People just get an add-on, they plug it in, they look at where the add-on tells them to go, and then they go and stand there. So I think that a lesser reliance on add-ons for World of Warcraft would make it easier for new players to jump into the game and be on a more level playing field, but also it would mean that, um, you know, there's not this arms race between the WoW devs and weak aura developers in terms of who can, who can just break the other one first. Now, I'm not saying World of Warcraft shouldn't have any add-ons at all. Of course not. WoW is, you know, fantastic with add-ons, and there's a lot of great add-ons that, that are really, really good for the game. I'm just saying I quite like jumping into Final Fantasy and not needing to go and get a bunch of stuff to feel like I can play the game. I can just jump straight in. The last thing that I think Final Fantasy does really great in comparison to World of Warcraft is longevity and continuation of content from previous expansions, making them basically timeless. I think this is something that Final Fantasy does great with the form of roulettes and again the way that it works with all of your classes and jobs and crafting and everything being on one character meaning you can easily jump into old content help a friend do a roulette and you know still gain things from it be encouraged to do these things because you're still progressing your character it's just a fantastic thing and it means that new players and people that are maybe progressing say through like stormblood are still going to be interacting with people that are playing endwalker and current expansion things which means you get a nice little social weaving a nice little social interaction that wouldn't otherwise happen and it kind of brings the whole game together it makes it feel like it's one big complete circle rather than just this continual line and you have new players over here and you have veteran players over there and that's it they stay in their separate corners i think this is really great and what it also means is that when a developer designs something they're going to put a lot of uh, a lot of time and effort into it and know that it's going to be continued and iterated on into the future, which is great. I think this is really important for an MMO and it's something that I wish WoW did more of. I've even suggested World of Warcraft could have an LFG system where you have a weekly or even a daily uh, kind of group of things, a group of activities to do. So things like a daily island expedition, a daily Torghast boss rush, a daily dungeon, a daily like raids from, you know, WoW's history or something, like something like that where you're constantly encouraged to a daily dragon riding event as well something like that where you're encouraged to go and do content of old that some players might have either never experienced or might want to experience and you have to go through all these awkward quests and uh kind of unlock processes in order to access this content like if you don't if you've never done an island expedition and you're new to world of warcraft and dragonflight you don't know where to go and get island expeditions unlocked they're a great piece of content with a lot of great transmog and mounts and collectibles to gain and you just don't know where to get that in wow if you don't already have it unlocked and there's no real encouragement to go and do that with other people if you put it on a daily roulette a weekly roulette whatever there's a nice little reward at the end that gives you a mount a pet some gold whatever it may be some crests or artifact power whatever the the, the system of the expansion is it just means that people are encouraged to go and have a wider breadth of content in the game and be rewarded for that. And I think it helps in those little content droughts as well. That's something that I think Final Fantasy does great with all the roulette systems and World of Warcraft could definitely borrow from that. So those are all of my comparisons and preferences 
From Final Fantasy XIV compared to World of Warcraft, I'd love to do another one of these way distant in the future when I've played more of the game and get to experience more and see whether I still feel this way or if anything changes for whatever reason. Please let me know in the comments section down below if there's anything that you really love about Final Fantasy or World of Warcraft. I love both games and this definitely absolutely is not a wow sucks, Final Fantasy is the best. There's definitely issues with Final Fantasy 2 and I think both games can thrive together in the same world and the same universe. But uh, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to future videos with you.